Fried chicken wars are hitting China. Apparently, Popeye is signing a lease in Shanghai this week for its first store in the country. The chain's parent company says it is ready to take on KFC and become the market leader. Our next guest knows the landscape very well. Mickey Pant was the CEO of Yum China. He's now the company's vice chairman and senior advisor. Mickey, welcome to Squawk Box. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Um, are you worried about Popeye's entering China? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> KFC is, you know, we've the more KFCs in, Amer in China than in America. It's always good to get new competitors and new uh, companies, so we'll see what happens. Have you had that chicken sandwich from Popeye's? I have not, no. You have not, so you yeah. have no idea what all the hype is about. No, I have. I mean, I've seen the product <laughs> and I've seen descriptions of it. I haven't eaten it. Do you want to eat it? Sure. I would think you'd go running to find I would be, right, to, to I would like be you... eating it, deconstructing it, trying to figure out what, what magic yeah, they... I uh... probably will. I talked to people who are, uh, who are following it very closely in the U.S. And, uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Why, why do you think that just took off, like lightning in a bottle? Well, I think food innovation in this industry always works, and I think that there's been so many instances over the last 10 years of long lines forming when a new product is launched. So I think that, uh, you know, that's what happened. It was, it's a good product, and it's innovative, and everybody's hungry for a chicken sandwich. So. If you solve the biggest problem that happens in a category that occurs most frequently or with a brand, you always have big results. Popeye's typical chicken-on-the-bone concept, uh, full meals, so this was, this was sort of a breakthrough for them. Yeah, right. It's funny to hear that Chicken Wars, you know, Melissa, Chicken Sandwich has been around forever, you know, and, and so they've got one, but it solved their particular problem, right. okay? And I think that's why, why it, it was worked. Like when when Chick-fil-A first started really rolling out, people were going crazy yeah. for that sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. But I think it's the bigger sauce. point is China sauce. is the world's biggest growth market for fast food. So everyone's going there. And, uh, you know, we've been there, David knows, for 30 mm. years. Yeah. And, um, Do you so, think operating in China has changed? It's become easier in a sense that uh, technology has moved far beyond what you see in any, any other country. I mean, they're so far ahead of America in terms of payment systems. And, you know, five years ago, we only had cash uh, transactions. And 90% now is, uh, is through QR codes. And uh, there's no cash at all in stores. And uh, the same thing for pre-ordering or menus right. and people go into stores, they don't have to look at the what menu. Kind of, what, what, kind, what kind of fees do all of the, the various banks and others take relative to the United States, for example? It's evolving, so it's variable. Obviously, we were there earlier and we had the first alliance, you know, with big companies right. like Alibaba to be able to roll out Alipay across the system. So it's negotiated. I don't think there's any fixed rules. Ours is, a, you know, obviously a trade secret we right. operate with. But the two big guys are Alipay and WeChat Pay. And, um, you know, like I said, they're far ahead of anybody else. And, uh, Have you seen any impact from the U.S.-China trade war when it comes to consumer behavior? And do you think that the U.S. should take a harder stance? And Congress is weighing some, um, some bills that would sort of condemn China for what it's doing here <clears throat> with Hong Kong protesters. Uh, do you think the U.S. should wade into that? Would that make business harder for you, in your view, have no effect? How do you view that? Well, on the first question, Melissa, I think on the, the market is growing very nicely. So I think we've declared three quarters of results so far. We're in the middle of the fourth quarter, obviously cannot talk about it. But the business has grown, and we're building a lot of stores. Last year, we built more than 800 new restaurants in just one country. And uh, as you refer to Popeyes and others, everyone's coming in. So for sure, the market is growing very rapidly. Um, as for whether or not the U.S. should wade into the China-Hong Kong? It's, it's, you know, it's, that's a political question, really. I, I don't have a particular view on it at the moment. I'm not I saying think... that you should have a, a, a particular political view, but could that make business harder for you? Or the sanctions? Well, you know, it depends on what, if, if sanctions happen and what shape or form they take. But, you know, we buy a billion chickens a year in China. They're all Chinese chickens. And, you know, we... We process them and then we sell the food. So a lot of our supply chain is localized. And, uh, you know, we, I mean, we are an American company in the sense we are Delaware Incorporated and listed here on the New York Stock Exchange. But essentially, it's a Chinese company. We have an right. exceptional Chinese CEO, Joey Watt, who runs the company. We have 400,000 400, employees in the country and wow. operate 9,000 stores in 1,300 cities. So it's a big business, essentially. You know, it's got the characteristics of a Chinese business and an American. How many more cities? You're in 1,300 cities. How many more? You know, maybe another 800, David. They just keep uh, the infrastructure build out is of such a scale. I mean, I hear a lot of comments, including on this show about China, which are ill-informed. I think that people making those comments haven't been to China. I think they were to go to China and have the privilege of living there and traveling widely across the country. 
And if you ski, you see the scale of the build out in small cities and small towns. So before I went, I was told by my friends, I'd say, urban phenomenon, the development, it's all in the you know, special economic zones on the eastern seaboard. It's not true. I've been to the most remote of areas. Mm -hmm. and, you know, where it's in Tibet or in Xinjiang, and look at the quality of the roads, and the, frankly, the cell phones work better, so <laughs> they're really far ahead, yeah. Right. I mean, I saw genuine 5G in action. I mean, see 5G E here, you know, which the speed seems to be very similar, but uh, they're, they're, they're very far ahead in technology. So. Thank you, Mickey.